shifting things around this morning. As we promised, we are talking about tips on how to train your dog. And if you're a dog lover, trust me, there are always <laughs> new tips we have to learn. And so we have owner of Belize International Working Dog Center, Amy Zamora, who's back with us again <laughs> to uh, remind us of all the do's and don'ts when you're training your dog at home. And Gavin, I think you'll ask all the questions because oh, yeah, you sure. have a new puppy, right? Yeah, absolutely. I yes, do. no problem. I'm ready for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, thanks thanks so much for joining us. Thanks and, for having um, me again. And uh, can, uh, I, I, we should also introduce our viewers to um, who we've got here. This is Joey. Mm -hmm. um, oh. She's our three-year-old Belgian Malinois. Um, this is Bibi's niece. Aww. So she's a little anxious with all the lights and everything that's going on. Okay. Yeah. I know, I know. You're fine. But, You're fine. Um, okay. Well, since I, I since um, I'm, I'm going to ask uh, for both for the benefit of our viewers and for me personally because I got a new dog. Uh, when we talk about training and um, how how early can we start? We usually start at uh, around the age of 12 weeks, so about three months. Um, but we don't take them in until they've had all their shots done. Mm -hmm. Just for safety precautions and because of parvo and so on, we do take our dogs out on walks and you don't know what they've walked in or yes. yep. what they've done. So it does make it a little harder for them. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes it, um, and then we, we try to make sure that you guys have had it for about a year, uh, I'm sorry, about a month. Mm -hmm. So it makes it easier for you to have the bonding. She sees her owner. I yeah. know. <laughs> well, uh, she's, she's one of mine, but um, she is very much attached to my guy, Melvin. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, um, so Amy, let's step back. And I know we, we actually have quite a few dogs here and they're on set. So please, yeah. uh, please bear with us. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And Amy, I think that the, the concept of what you have with your working dog center um, you didn't always start off knowing you wanted to train, but this is what's, what it's become, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's something that I, I, I started being really interested in dogs at the age of 17. I mean, yeah. I've always been a big dog lover, Yeah. but um, it's taken us some time to yeah. get to where we are and to educate ourselves, not just other people, but ourselves. And um, I actually just got back from doing service dog training last year. Oh, I, was, wow. I got stuck in Georgia last year during the whole COVID fiasco. Okay. Um, I know, I know, I know. Oh, wow, it's so right. you're training service dogs now. Yes, um, mostly mobility dogs and therapy dogs. That's what we're mostly doing. Um, oh, I, when so people great. hear service dogs, they think about seeing eye dogs. Yeah. And, you know, but that is a whole different science. Trying to yeah. teach a dog to be deliberately be disobedient yeah. is a little harder. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, what you train, when you say mobility dogs, what does that mean? They help the person to move. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, amputees. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, know, she's very overstimulated. She is. It's all the lights and everything that's going on. So let me just go ahead and have her go off set. Yes. With, sure. Yes, Melvin. Yeah, he can come on. Hmm. And Let's he's go got a beauty over yeah. there. Oh there my gosh, go. my favorite. All right, all right. This is Holly. Hi, oh, Holly. Hi. Holly's a little calmer. Holly is five months. Holly oh. wants to say <laughs> hi. She hi, is very, Holly. very social. Oh, I love. Oh my <laughs> oh, yes. goodness. You probably smell like other dogs. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> you went. So you you did the service training. Yes. Hi. Um. Holly's actually one of the dogs that we're thinking about doing service dog training with. Okay. Just because of how much calmer she is. Yeah. Um, she might not seem it exactly. right now. Right, right, right. <laughs> but again, all the lights and everything does have yeah. them overstimulated. Yeah. Um, but they just Holly got out of a long car drive because yeah. you're from you, you came yes. in this morning. Yes. So they're all very anxious right now. Yeah. Um, so it makes it a little bit harder mm -hmm. on them. So um, this is also, you know, you you did the training on how to train service dogs yes. can i ask i mean we don't have we have some special breed dogs but a lot of them are mixed can any dog be a service dog really as long as a dog has a temperament for it we do use a dog a lot um depending on how calm they are and what they're doing and so on dogs like joey we don't use very often mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um if you notice the difference between her and joey already yeah. she's a lot calmer she's not whining joey's breed is like 10 of these dogs yeah oh wow um, and they need to be overstimulated. Her, we can take her out working for days, and we actually need to still take her on like eight mile hikes. Mm -hmm. So she has to so get much her energy. To tone down. I mean, she can be working all day and just to get her to tone down. So you don't see a lot of Belgian Malinois being, um, being service dogs. 
you do see, I know you smell the sausages, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> she is very food motivated. Yeah. Um, but we definitely, it, it takes, if the dog has a very calm demeanor, we don't usually start training service dogs until after a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just because it gives them, it gives us some time to see what's going on. See between, their temperament. Between when you first get them to a year, their development and their personality change. Yeah. So much that it makes it um, hard to go ahead and see if you are going to be working the dog properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but so what's the right, I remember, you know, what's the right temperament uh, to look for in dogs? Um, I guess it depends on your lifestyle as well. Okay. Which is why we ask people to go ahead and wait. We actually ask people to come on in and, and let us know what your lifestyle is and mm -hmm. what type of dog you're looking for. Okay. To see if that matches your lifestyle. Okay. German Shepherds, if you have a very busy life, don't really match your lifestyle. I know, I know. Because mm -hmm. they have, they need to be they walked. Do, they yeah. need to be run a lot still. Mm -hmm. they oh, need not to even walk, yeah. run. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A lot, dogs need space. Dogs yeah. need to be able to run and move. And, and um, you know, people think that, oh, I have a big yard, my dog has enough space. No, mm -hmm. that is too limited because it's still a, a very strict structure still. So it takes them some time. Mm -hmm. There we go. All it does right, take Holly. them some time to, um, they, it, they, they still just go around in a circle. Yeah. They yeah. need to be able to be in a field that they can run around and don't have to worry about slamming into things or slamming into other people. Yeah. You know, being able to play with other dogs and so on. Mm -hmm. So Holly actually just finished the program a week ago. Oh, okay. okay. She actually just finished her service. And when she first met Joey, mm -hmm. it was a head-on collision. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, How yeah. Come? They We just let them out and just went bam at each other and they just played and tackled each other and oh so now they're best friends they they are, <laughs> they, are. They, they try to be so that's yep. why she's crying to come back to her she is more whining just because of because of again the lights and everything she's yeah. very yeah. overly stimulated but um so. you also that that also brings up another thing which is um, important in in i guess dog training and, and that's uh, socializing with other dogs yes yeah it's very very important this is why you see a lot of people when they're walking their dogs and they see other dogs yeah they're being yanked yep. and pulled okay. by you know because they're trying to get to the other dog so that's a service that we also offer where we teach you how to one walk your dog properly the dog isn't stimulated by mm -hmm other dogs mm -hmm. um isn't stimulated by other people walking past them mm -hmm. even joey as small as she is because joey is a little bit smaller than she is but even joey um people tend to walk on the other side of the street mm -hmm. yeah. yeah they're like hold your dog hold your dog and i'm like yeah. she, she's a puppy she's, yeah. she's not joey's superpowers is she's gonna lick you to death yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much her superpower yeah <laughs> I know, so, Holly. you know, Amy, we're going to get into some of the training tips because that's key as well. Uh, just little things that people need to know. And I know the sausage is a big part of it, like oh, yeah. motivating with food. Yes. But looking at, at the, the capacity now to train service dogs in the country, not just for security, mm -hmm. but also to look at the fact that you can train therapy dogs. Therapy dogs are becoming a big part of, yes. of how people are coping now. Yes. Yeah. What do you, how do you train them? What do they, I mean, some dogs are so naturally in tuned with your mm -hmm. feelings that they provide therapy anyway. Mm -hmm. But what does the additional training do? Well, dogs live off of energy and vibrations. Yeah. So she's not just, right now, all three dogs that we have in here are not just feeling my energy and my vibrations. They're feeling yours. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. feeling their anxiousness your um your excitement you know um because i can see both of you are very much dog people yeah. Yeah. but i mean your cameraman might not be and for them they look really big but they're puppies yeah you know so that might be another aspect of it but when you when you want a therapy dog this is pretty much what you look for mm -hmm. a yeah. dog that tends to calm down easy enough that is easy to be around other people um can pretty much adjust to the environment that they're in, is not extremely responsive. Things like that is what we look for. Holly, hi honey. <laughs> hi honey. That's yeah. what you look for in a therapy dog, but you don't always see um, the calmness of the dog until, mm -hmm. again, after a year. Okay. Sometimes we wait until they're at least 12 months. Um, any working dog that we use. Okay. Um, we tend to use, we tend to wait. So like bite dogs or drug dogs or explosives, mm -hmm. we wait until they're at least over a year yeah. to see if they have the energy to want to bite. Joey, we didn't know we were gonna use Joey for tracking until she hit about two years. 
Oh, what okay. is tracking? Tracking is being able to find scents on the floor, on the ground. Oh. So we, we, we are going to be using her for specifically. Oh, so she's going to have all the energy to do that. Oh, for, sure. <laughs> for sure. Definitely for sure. Yeah. Holly, just because she's so calm, like I said, we definitely want to use her as some sort of service animal. Yeah. Um, I've already spoken to her parents about doing it. They really, really want to do bite work with her. Okay. But from what I'm seeing, she doesn't have the temperament to do protection work with. Okay. Um, so, but that, that again can change over the next six to eight months. How yeah. old is she? She's about five months. Yeah. What? It's, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah, no, she does. You know, that, that reminds me of a, of a story I read about uh, this, this dog that failed the police academy because he was too nice. So yeah. sometimes, you know, you don't, so that's interesting to where that you can't just uh, no. train, <laughs> you can't just train certain behaviors into dogs that you have to work no. with their personality, yeah. right? And I've had people, we've actually have a couple dogs that we're doing service dog training with. Um, one of the videos that we had sent in with the little uh, English bulldog, mm -hmm. he actually just got certified. As a security dog? As a service dog. As a, a service dog? dog? Yeah. Oh. Um, but it took us working from last year, October, mm -hmm. with these people up until just two weeks ago. Yeah. That's how long it took us. So mm -hmm. that's fun. That's calm. That's her and her dad. Um, that's when we first started doing the walk of uh teaching the dog That's how to a, walk in a heel i was going to say yeah so she's trying to learn not to I walk in front correction. of dad and he's correcting her and um we had sent in two other videos with him walking in a cafe with her getting her to sit down heel come stay while he was doing all of those stuff. so you train people how to train the dogs yes and you also take the dogs and train them too yes okay. so if the dog has a behavioral issue or the dog just needs basic obedience training we go ahead and take in the dog we tweak the behavior, whatever needs to happen. You know, if your dog is ripping up your couch or ripping mm. up your, your clothes or stuff like that, we find out what your lifestyle is, what the dog is doing. We tweak the program based on that and then go from there. How many times is the dog the problem or the owner the problem? Um, <laughs> about 80% of the time it's the owner. Yeah. <laughs> about 80% of the time it is, it is that? the owner. Um, a lot of the times when people do come to me like that, they go, my dog's really anxious. My dog has separation anxiety. Mm -hmm. And then I look at them and I go, no, I'm sorry. Your dog has what's called spoiled dog syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> it is not, it's not separation anxiety. And I just explained to them, you know, it's more us giving off to the dog. It's more us um, feeding our energy off to the dog. Yeah. This right here is a direct connection between you and the dog. Mm -hmm. So if I was really nervous and anxious, you'd see it in her behavior. Yeah. And she's so and she she's decided to to relax and calm down. And this is also this is one of the reasons why I definitely want to go ahead and use her for some some sort some sort of service work. Oh, there <laughs> you go. She's like this is too easy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So let's let's talk about some of the basic tricks we can learn. We're teaching Gavin how to train his new puppy, right? Okay. There we yeah. go. Um, sure. So one of the first things that we tend not to do Simple. is give our dogs over affection. We oh. tend to give affection, affection, affection. We don't give a lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. Now, I know a lot of people here have probably heard about Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer. Yep. Yeah. Um, and he has a mantra that says, exercise, discipline, affection, and in that order. Okay. okay? We exercise our dogs out, which means we go ahead and let them run and play and get out all that excess energy. It's just like with kids in school, they can't concentrate if they don't get a break. Yep. Yeah. So we gotta make sure that they run all of that out. And then we go ahead and do the discipline, which is the training okay. portion of it. And after we do the training, then you can go ahead and give them as much love as you discipline. Now, a lot of people think that disciplining your dog does not mean you won't spank your dog or you won't, mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean killing your dog, but a tap, letting the dog know, no, you, yeah. you have to. And dogs don't talk. Yeah. Dogs, dogs' language is touch. Yeah. So a lot of the times we would use our fingers and we grab here or check on the side or by the shoulder blades so the dog starts to calm down. Mm -hmm. You know, so all of these things we need to make sure and I tell everybody, we as humans, all we tend to do is affection, affection, affection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guilty. Yeah. yeah. And, and before, before I started doing this, I was very much guilty of that too. But one yeah. of the things that my trainers and I practice is we discipline as much as we give affection. Okay. Yeah. And we switch. We, yeah. And it's switching immediately from it. Um, and that's probably one of the best things that I can give people advice to. Yeah. Run your dogs, socialize your dogs, socialize them with people. A lot of people feel that if I keep my dogs away from other people, mm -hmm. my dog's going to become aggressive. No, that's not, that's not the case. 
All right. So we, we're going to do some demos, Amy? Sure. OK. Um, what can you teach us? And there's a little one over there? Yes, we'll bring her out in a minute. OK. Um, so one of the things, and I, why I brought her is because she's, Holly has already been through the program. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the other little one Holly is mine. Holly loves you, Gavin. <laughs> The other little one that you guys are gonna see is mine, uh -huh. but we haven't done much with her because she's a little dog. Okay. So, nah, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Thank you. So now you can tell how spoiled they are because yeah. they definitely <laughs> live inside and they, yeah. they don't get to do much. Yeah. Okay, so I have to ask if it's okay because this kind of muffles up That's the fine. sound. You can take it off. So if I can take it off just for a few minutes. Um, All right. She's already at me. Yeah. <laughs> so one of the ways we teach dogs is to sit. Mm -hmm. But this is how we teach to sit. Right Hand over the head. Yes. Good girl. Right. Nice. So she smells it first. What we do is we use a scent odor. We lift the head up. We move our hand up. What happens is dogs' bodies are so long. Mm -hmm. So what happens is they tend to follow the scent, and then their butt hits the floor. And that's all we ah. do is say yes. Okay. So to teach the dog to down, we do the same thing. Take the sausage here. Put it down. Yes. Good girl. Oh. So why we use the word yes as well is because yes is her reward. Yes is not. The treats are not the reward. Oh. Yeah. So what happens is eventually we get to, we get to switch out the treats and we can just use it, toys yeah. or we don't have to use it any at all. Or just the word and, yes. And just the word yes. Or we give affection. Yes. Mm -hmm. So like I said, she just went through the program a week ago. Two weeks of training and this is all it takes. Now, we put her in a, down. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it takes her a little bit longer. Sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so Where what we do it? then is there, there uh, we go. Uh. And then put her hand on the floor. Stay. Oh. And I can drop the leash. Stay. I can walk away from her. Ah. Uh -uh. <laughs> Down. <laughs> and again, it takes some time. Yeah. Sit. Yeah. Down. Stay. Stay. Oh. <laughs> so sometimes too, we have to learn when the dog has had enough. Okay. Yeah. The dog, when enough is enough. So what yeah. we'll do is we'll have you guys do with Mally if you guys want to nice. do that. Nice. Okay. Yes. Okay. So just let me go ahead and grab Mally. Let me. Well, I can hold Holly. <laughs> <laughs> Take him out. Take him out. All right. So we have uh, Joey and Holly over there. Joey is super excited still. Yeah, oh, yeah. She's so overstimulated. Hi, darling. So this is Mally. I'm, I'm giving affection for her. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. She, is very, she, she thrives on affection. Hi. What's her name? Mally? Mally. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mally. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, you are so adorable. Yes. So what do we do with her? Okay. So this is what we're going to do. She hasn't done this in probably two or three years. OK. okay. So this is why I brought her in so that you guys can go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. OK. So, so you take the sausage. Ah. Ah. <laughs> yes. There you go. So it's just taking the sausage and putting it over the head. Okay. Now, if you notice, she's doing this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all I say is, ah, that's her correction. OK? So all right, take okay, a piece of and then right, go, go ahead and call her. Her name right. is Mally. Yeah. Come, Mally. Come. Put your hand over her head. Come. Yes. yes. As yes. soon as a butt hits the floor, you yes. take her yes. Okay. So you can call her. You want more sausage? Mally. Mm -hmm. Mally. <laughs> Mally. Sit. No words. Just no. put your oh. hand over her head. Yes. <laughs> the reason right. why we do hand signals first is dogs tend to follow movement. Mm. Aww. Yeah. So I've always told my clients, you know, if you don't believe me, Go somewhere that has um, security guard on duty <laughs> and don't see a word and just run. Yeah. Just move. <laughs> and let me know how you make out the next day. No. And but dogs tend to follow movement Move. a lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so we tend to teach with hand signals first, and then we go ahead and we do it with verbal. Yeah. Okay. So. Yes. Okay, so that's definitely something I think we get wrong quite often. We tend, we want to build word association. What we tend to do is we go, sit, 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 sit. Yeah. Yes. What it's happens then, the dog physically starts to count how many times you say the word sit before they actually do it. Oh. Oh. This way, this method is, is kind of like what we do is called Pavlov's theory. Yeah. yeah. Ring the bell, put the food down. Yeah. Ring the bell, put the food down. By the yeah. end of the day, by the end of the week, you ring the bell, no food goes down, the dog still salivates. Yeah. It's the same thing, that when you start to take your hand, the dog follows it. Ah, yes. 
There we go. Good girl. Aww. And we don't reward unless all four paws are on the ground. Now, for down, this is what we tend to do. And we put our hand here. The puppy will do this and claw at it. Mm -hmm. And eventually what happens is they get tired. Yeah. And, and the, the body lays down. So I'm going to help her out a little bit <laughs> by holding the collar down. And then eventually when she lies down, that's when Very you give good. the reward? That's when you say the word, yes. Aww. So we're going to help her a little bit here. <laughs> right here. And sometimes the scent odor ah, isn't strong enough, so we have to use multiple sausage. Aww. This is also when we do um, drug work with some dogs. Yeah. yeah. It definitely takes some time. Um, we have to use a, a bigger scent of drugs or, yeah. or explosives. You know, I, I was about to say, I think one of the things that we take for granted so often is it takes time. It does. Oh, yeah. See, this, what I'm doing is I'm holding down her collar uh -huh. so it forces her. Yes. And there good go. There she is. It takes some time. And this is what a lot of people don't realize is that you, you definitely need to have a lot of patience with them. And going a couple days a week or once a week for six to eight weeks or... <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. Um, for a couple weeks, you know, it, it, it's definitely an investment. Doing it as early as possible definitely helps you mm -hmm. to make sure you have better control over your dog. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of people think that uh, sometimes we do have dogs where we have to correct them when they're pulling, mm -hmm. and the dog backflips, smacks their head, and we can't give in to that. We can't go, oh, I'm so sorry. No, because then touch actually makes a dog, lets a dog think, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Oh. You know, so if you start, what we do when, we, when we're training bite dogs is we tie them onto a fence and we aggravate them. Mm -hmm. And we have them pull and pull and pull. And when we finally let them go and have them latch onto the arm or to the leg, most of the time we start on the arm. Um, the dog tends to, we, what we do is we go up behind the dog and we start petting the dog. Good dog, yeah. good girl, good boy. So the dog understands, oh, I am supposed yeah, to bite. Yeah. I am supposed to hold on. Yeah. So when your dogs are barking at people and you go, shh, all right, yeah. all right, all right, you're just encouraging that behavior even more. Oh, okay. See, so you want to be careful about the touch. Mm -hmm. That's the key thing. You want to be careful about your tone as well. Yeah, yeah. If your tone isn't there, um, there's three things you can do with the behavior. You can praise it you'll get more of the behavior, which is the word yes that we use. You can correct it, which you've heard both Melvin and I go, ah, because mm -hmm. dogs respond better to sound than to words. Just like um, kids, mm -hmm. you can tell a child so many times, no, don't touch a TV, don't touch a TV, don't touch a TV. You walk out, the first thing the kid does is okay. touch a TV. Yeah. Um, but again, if you don't correct the behavior properly, you get more of that behavior. It's the same concept that applies with the dog. Um, and you can go ahead and ignore the behavior. I don't know about you, but when I was a kid growing up, if I did something I wasn't supposed to do, if my mother ignored me, oh my gosh, I'm cleaning the house from top to bottom, doing everything <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be doing yeah. because I want my mom to start talking to me again. Yeah. It's the same concept with the dogs. Dogs for dogs, negative attention or positive attention, attention is attention. attention. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to be careful on what you do and how you praise your dog. Touch is a form of praise. Your tone is a form of praise. So saying the word yes in a high-pitched voice, you're letting the dog know you're doing what I want yeah, you to do. Yeah. Um, and again, just like kids, saying no so many times, it goes in one ear and out the other, and you more get their attention when you're, saying, when you're doing sounds like, ah, 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 no. yeah. mm -hmm. that gets their attention better. But doing so many sounds with the dog confuses them. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to say, ah, once, and then that's it. Um, so definitely tone and knowing what behavior you like and what behavior you don't like. Yeah. It's, dog training is black and white. You cannot... Sometimes the dog's allowed on the couch, and other times the dog's not allowed on the couch. Yeah. It's either off or on. Yeah. You know, you're either allowed in the house or you're not allowed in the house. Yeah. You can't be. There's no halfway. No. Yeah. Or you're get, the dog's going to end up confused, and then you're wondering, okay, so why isn't the training working? Yeah. 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 I think we tend to think that they, they have the capacity to think like we do. Um, a lot of people think that. Yeah. Yes. And they're yes or no. Like allowed to not allowed to yeah we tend to humanize our dogs a lot we tend yeah. to give off a lot of our emotions onto our dogs so training comes with a lot of patience it doesn't happen what's the ideal time to start training your dog um you can start off at any age really um it's just it's just getting them to you can go say hi it's just having that bond with your dog 
Okay. It's just definitely being able to have the bond with their dog. I, as early as, like I said, we start, we can start off at three weeks, mm -hmm. but I, I, sorry, at, at uh, three months, but I don't personally take dog onto my facility until they've had all their shots. shots yeah. yeah. Just because I just, just for, can get for sick, care yeah. and just so that, you know, I mean, all our dogs get their shots every year. It's just the fact that, um, you know, we do take them out on walks and we're not sure what they've walked yeah. into yeah. and if they might bring that onto the property. We don't want anybody else's dog getting sick. So uh, if somebody wants to, has a dog that just is not behaving, maybe they run out the gate every time the fence is open or they're, you know, constantly getting in fights. They have bad behavior. Mm -hmm. you, you offer kind of like an yes. obedient school for dogs yes. that we hear about. Yes, yeah. we do. What we do then if the dog... Um, I would ask if the dog has had any prior training, if the dog is, um, if what, you know, I find out more, I would go in and do an evaluation. Come here. Mm -hmm. We do an evaluation on the dog, on your lifestyle, mm -hmm. um, and just to kind of more figure out what package we need to do with, yeah. with the dog <laughs> or with you. She doesn't want to stay up. <laughs> Molly's like, new sense, new sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. And this is, this is one of the things that people don't realize with dogs, too. You can train them as much as you want to, but you have to realize, one, they have a brain of their own. Mm -hmm. Two, they're animals. Mm -hmm. And they'll still do what they want, when they want, how they want it. Um, Bibi, the last dog we brought on the show, we couldn't have dog beds around her. She would tear them up. This dog lived in Afghanistan, was in Iraq, was a part of a tour, uh -huh. uh, did bite work, and she was extremely well trained, but I couldn't have dog beds around her. <laughs> you come in and there's stuff all over the floor, Bibi definitely tore up a dog bed. Yeah. All right, so let's do just a quick list of definite do's and definite don'ts in dog training for people at home. Okay. Yeah, tell me. Um, don't be hot and cold with your dog. Mm -hmm. It's either either or. It's either yes, the dog's allowed to do this, or no, the dog isn't allowed to do it. I know one of the biggest things that people have issues with is dogs jumping on them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't let them do it while they're puppies. <laughs> it's cute while they're this tiny, yeah. but if they're going to grow up to be the size of Holly or even the size of Joey, it definitely doesn't help. Yeah. Um, you know, especially if you're in a nice white clothes mm -hmm. and your dog jumps up on you, then, you know, <laughs> you get really mad at the dog. Yeah. There's, it's not the dog's fault. You've tolerated them and allowed them to jump on you from the minute they were puppies. So don't have them do it at, at this age. Okay. Um, definitely, if you're going to allow your dog in the house, it's either in the house or out of the house. Mm -hmm. um, when you're about to walk your dog, you step out the door first, not the dog stepping out first. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. What that does is it lets the dog understand that you're in control. Okay. Mm -hmm. That they cannot do anything that, that, they're not, that you don't want them to do. Um, and I have a lot of people who don't like me saying it, but the same way you have to discipline your kids, mm -hmm. you need to discipline your dog. You know, mm -hmm. the same thing with potty training. If you don't create a schedule and regime for your dog, there's nothing that's going to work for the dog at all. That's right. You need, you need to have a schedule. And make it a schedule that you know that, you know what, if you get up 5 o'clock every morning and you're going to let your dog out at that time, dog doesn't understand when it's the, when it's the weekend and you want to sleep in. That's <laughs> right. So yeah. definitely make sure that you, you, it's realistic for you, for your lifestyle, yeah. that you can continue that with your dog. Definitely exercise your dogs. Mm -hmm. them to run. Even if they're in a big yard. Even if they're in a big yard, allow them to run. Yeah. Um, a lot of times people feel like their dogs are going to run away from them if they let them off leash and run around. Guess what? Look at your dog and call their names and walk away from your dog. Your dog will come running to you because mm. they're already used to playing the game of tag where you run after them. Yeah. If you switch the roles on them, oh. they're going to look at you like, wait, wait, no, that's not how we play this game. <laughs> <laughs> They're supposed to follow me. All right, I'm going to yeah. try that one. Next. <laughs> well, so that's, that'll, that'll come in handy for like when, when the dog gets out of the gate and then the they start, yard, when yeah. they start, when you start running after them, they start right. running faster. Joey, <laughs> no. yeah. Joey, for instance, um, when she was about a year old, she would not let me come bring her inside. So I locked her out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I locked her out and it started raining about 10 minutes after she was locked out. And, and I left her out there in the rain for about 15 minutes, and she screamed and hollered, and I finally let it out. After that, every time I called everybody back in, Joe is the first one through the door. <laughs> uh, all right, and how do people get in touch? So there's some of this that we can try doing on our own, but there's some behaviors that I know you have the expertise to help with. Um, getting us by phone is probably one of the best things. Okay. Um, calling us or texting us and if we don't get back to you right away, if we don't answer your calls right away, it's because we're all busy training and we don't tend to necessarily answer our phones yeah. when we're out training. Um, so calling us would be the best way yeah. to get a hold of us. 
And as you said, you do a, a range of training services, including yes. correcting bad behaviors. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's actually a part of the obedience training. Yeah. Um, this is why I try to get people to bring dogs in as early as possible. Um, I mean, we've trained up to eight-year-olds. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We've had oh. mutts come off the street that we train at eight. Okay. So it's definitely, it, it's not. It's never too late. Yeah. Okay. And if someone is interested in having, in getting a therapy dog or a uh, service dog, um, what do they do? Do they tell you they're interested? Do they bring they their own dog? They would need to tell us that they are interested in what I, my, um, my, my, my best uh, choice when it comes to that would be let us find a dog for you. Okay. Not to bring a dog into us. A lot of people think that, oh, I have this dog and it's done it before with this breed. It's done it before. It doesn't necessarily mean that your dog will have the capability of doing that. Yeah. So we tend to ask people to not bring in dogs if you want to do service training with them. Let us find the dog for you that's already very docile and we can try and see. Um, that's trainable. It, not if it's trainable, if, if it has the capacity to be able to handle being a service dog. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Molly, you're ready to go. Oh, yep. there you are. <laughs> She's ready to go. Amy, we appreciate it so much. Gavin? No problem. Did yeah. you get some tips oh, that yeah, you can sure. use? Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. <laughs> not affection first. I know, but not. Yeah. Well, she's, been, she's already done the work, so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, it's it's really hard not to touch fluffy white small things. Right? Oh yeah. my yeah. gosh. Yes. And especially when she's so sweet. Amy, thank you so much. And of course, you are located in Belmopan. In Belmopan. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have all the space to be able to do this training as well so people can look out. Uh, yes. At the pl it's called Belize International Working Dog Center. Yes, that's right. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks Amy. for having us, thank guys. You. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take a break. And when we come back, we'll get that conversation going with you about uh, strains of COVID. Please stay tuned.